Hello, everybody. So, um, um, while preparing this uh, this presentation, we decided to actually split this presentation in uh, uh, in two webinars, simply because we we thought by that um, there could be a way to give you some overview of of some project we did on how to do sentiment analysis, then go into the more specific of how how um, how um, let me just first share my screen. Uh, okay, how um, um, uh, how specifically if in Wordstat you could do some of the things that I will show you today. How to both build a dictionary, how to customize a dictionary, and improve the accuracy of the sentiment prediction. So what I would like uh, to to present to you is also how to um, how uh, uh, um, a project we did where we tried to first improve our own dictionary, our own sentiment dictionary, and as well as um, uh, how to customize the dictionary and what kind of benefits one could do if one customized the dictionary. So uh, uh, I will likely switch some time to, to WordStat. So here I have um, WordStat. Uh, open and um, we did a project on on the data sets uh, th that I've just opened here and we will see later how 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 to do sentiment analysis pretty quickly but but uh, what we did to, to to improve the dictionary okay so what we will do today if it, is that we will um, look at the the sentiment analysis black box okay we'll try to see how it is being done and and also how uh, uh, what kind of results you should expect, okay? Uh, now, um, there's actually three sentiment analysis approach. Uh, the first one would be a machine learning approach where you actually train the software to, to recognize sentiment on, on, on the training sets that have been uh, coded for sentiment, positive, negative, you may have also neutral or, or other categories. And the idea is that by applying the machine learning uh, model, develop on this data set you could predict some results but there's also and this is probably the most common one uh, for rule based approach where you actually apply a a lexicon or a dictionary to uh, to try to identify sentiment uh, words or phrases uh, in a text both positive and negative ones okay uh, and the third approach is actually a mix of both uh, so so both machine learning and a rule-based approach. Uh, and, and what we did is that we tried to see how different tools, different lexicons uh, were uh, good at, at categorizing some, um, some, um, uh, some sentiment. Okay, so, uh, and, and I want to show you that in order for you to understand what is involved and what kind of, of um, uh, results to expect from sentiment tools, especially from from um, from existing tool, uh, either commercial one or or uh, open source one. So the first uh, five uh, elements here are actually five different resources, free resources that can uh, that that will allow you to do some uh, some sentiment analysis. The first three using lexicon. So uh, NRC did develop a sentiment dictionary. Uh, Liu and Hu has, has developed one of the first dictionaries for sentiment analysis, and they have some positive and negative words. And Finn also developed a dictionary which uh, weight words from one to five. So five would be uh, more positive, minus five would be very negative. Okay. But uh, we also tried uh, standard NLP and NLTK, two common uh, libraries available to do um, to do uh, uh, sentiment analysis and they uh, they uh, are using pre-trained machine learning so that you could apply their their pre-trained models and try to see whether you could predict now um, uh, wordstat uh, we had a version 1.2 uh, which contained quite a lot of words one thing that makes a difference and I will show to you is that we are using rules that take into account negation and double negation and and we'll get back to that later uh, I'll try to show it to you uh, but also we were able to get results from three different companies three different companies uh, offering 
sentiment analysis solution, we we were able to apply their solution on our data sets and, and, and obtain some results. Uh, those two, three companies are very popular companies, so they, they, uh, they have been used quite a lot elsewhere. So, so let's look at at what uh, are our results. Now for WordStat, I did mention that that uh, WordStat use rules, look at negation. The thing is that w what we do is that we uh, actually don't look necessarily at positive words, but positive words um, that are not preceded by negation. So if a negation appear within four words before, then we consider that as negative instead. And for negative words, they should not be preceded uh, by negation, it, but in this case it's immediately before. Same thing for the negative, that's the reverse, so a negative words will be, um, um, for negative words not preceded by a, a negation, immediately preceded, and positive words within four words. Why the difference? And we'll show it to you next slide. But uh, we also look at false, ne uh, false negation or double negation, so for example not only uh, will uh, does include some negative words, but they are actually positive. They they, they don't shift the, the the sentiment of a a um, a sentiment words. Okay, so 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 we included several of those in the dictionary. Take that into account. So what we did, and and the reason why why we use different rules is that we actually look at how whether negation. Um, negative words tend uh, negation tend to shift uh, the uh, the the valence of both positive and negative words, and we found that for for positive words, the negation could appear up to four words before, and it was still shifting the meaning of the positive words, while that was not the case for 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 negation. Okay, so uh, that's the reason why. Why, why we did that. Now, if I look at the experiments we did, okay, we had a data set and what we decided to do is take 20,000 Amazon reviews of beauty products and for experiment purpose we decided to have a, a, a balanced uh, sample of 10,000 reviews with negative uh, feedback, one or two, and uh, 10,000 uh, with uh, very positive feedback with the five star ratings. Okay, so we use that those, we look at those uh, to see, to make sure that they were indeed negative uh, 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 and, and it was the case. Uh, so so uh, uh, when a, a negative score, because we know that sometimes people will, can make good comments, give one star, we didn't found those to be uh, very prevalent. They are probably, but they are at low frequency, okay? So, uh, and, and what we did, the first thing we did, we took a measure uh, of percentage of correct sentiment prediction. So we will only look at the pre prediction when the software or when, when the dictionary or the tool uh, predict that it's positive versus negative. And, uh, and, and, we, and we divide it by the total number of prediction. Okay, so that would be one way to do it. And if we do that, we get some quite interesting results. So, for example, for the for for the first five here, those are open source, and we have commercial ones. Uh, and there is one company that uh, seems to give quite good results, 91%. Uh, this is actually one of the most uh, popular company for doing sentiment analysis. But uh, but what um, actually we could uh, we could argue that this is not a good metrics and that a better metrics would be to also take into account when no prediction was made. Uh, typically this is done when, when um, something is categorized as neutral. Uh, neutral indeed is quite often defined as when they don't see any positive or negative words. Uh, and mix is when the, uh, there's a combination of both positive and negative words, some, some tools will categorize that as mix, okay? And when we do that, we get a quite different picture. So this is the picture with uh, Formula One, and this is the picture with Formula Two. And, and the company C went from 90 something to 259% only. And we see some tools also that, that, uh, that goes down quite a lot. Uh, this one is barely above chance, predicting uh, uh, only 52% on the overall prediction, okay? Uh, 
uh, now, uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the reason why this company seed uh, um, was, was actually um, uh, uh, um, decreased so much is that they are using different tools than other ones, okay? So, so typically the way we deal with that and the way we compute uh, the accuracy was to look at when, a positive, when the number of positive words were more than negative words, we consider that as positive. When there were more words, uh, negative words than positive ones, it was categorized as overall negative. When there was an equal number, it could be categorized as mixed. Uh, and for, for no sentiment word, that could be considered neutral, okay? But this company, what they did is that as soon as there was more than one, uh, uh, one word of the other sentiment, uh, the, the, the minority sentiment, they categorized that as mixed. The problem is that by doing that, they actually get rid of almost uh, half of the, 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 the item to be categorized. So indeed they were more accurate according to Formula One, but it's like, okay, it's, it's like this first orchestra. Archer who is actually more accurate, but of course uh, the task is easy because they, they actually don't, don't take into account the most difficult one to predict. So that's, uh, and, and that's the reason why you see some, sometimes some people claiming that they have 90% accuracy. Yeah, but uh, I think that maybe they are not considering uh, what they, they, they categorize as either mixed or neutral, okay? And this is what we did. We decided to 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 to, uh, to to really count those. Okay, so what we did is that we decided to um, use the same rule, reapply. We we had access and we were able to to recompute for this company. And so actually, uh, um, the, the the company was at forty eight percent. And when we recompute with our rules, it went up to fifty nine percent. Okay, so so, um, uh, but we force here uh, when there was more than one word for, of of the other sentiment, we force it anyway to the sentiment that had more words, and we categorize it as positive or negative. Okay, so this is um, what what we did, but but what we knew also is that we knew also how to, how how to in, increase the, uh, the software, but but what we did also. Um, okay, um, accuracy is only one dimension, and I have seen a lot of people talking about um, uh, accuracy of, of sentiment tools. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about uh, bias, uh, and uh, to represent that, uh, I, I will show you three examples where the accuracy is the same, 70%, okay? So here we have a 70%, no bias, so we predict uh, both positive and negative as well. But if I take this one, it, it's also an accuracy of 70%, but this time we have a, a slight positive bias. We are more able to predict a positive score uh, and, and uh, have more difficulty with negative score. And this is also for another bias, but now a negative one. And this one allow us to see that, well, um, this one has, uh, can predict with very good accuracy negative items and maybe classify items more often as negative, but uh, it has more issue uh, predicting um, positive sentiment. So how do those tools fare with bias? So what we did is that we measure um, and we found that most of the tool, including our own tool, which is actually here, okay, uh, f um, have a positive bias that goes from 15% to even 29%, uh, while um, the uh, two tools, the, uh, the Stanford NLP library and this company C, ha have negative bias. So they tend, even if uh, we had a balance um, corpus, it, it tends to uh, come with a, a figure at the end that says that it's, it's more negative. Now, um, um, so we knew from there how to improve that. So we decided to, to, to uh, we had to, to increase the overall accuracy. We tried to see whether we could decrease positive bias because so we spent some time at seeing whether some words should be removed or maybe had some negative words. 
so by by increasing number of, of, of negative words and this is basically what we did so so for example we did um, remove the number of positive words and we also had it a few hundred positive uh, negative words and by doing that we were able to 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 increase the accuracy here from 70.8 percent to 77.6 percent which uh, so we were very happy with that um, but uh, we also were able also to reduce the prediction the, the error in prediction because this is actually the the error part at, uh, the wrong prediction and we were able to go from sorry from um, a, a some percentage and and then reduce it um, significantly so that we would be more precise when a prediction was made we made less uh, prediction error okay so this is the tool uh, that we made and basically um, uh, in terms of error also we, we did want to uh, to decrease error and it went from uh, bias I mean so it went from nine, uh, 19 to 11 percent uh, but we still have a positive bias but um, and and basically to, to to show you quickly let me switch to words that uh, when I want to 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 analyze some text and let me go there basically let me open a version 2 um, okay so so we we um, created and we had some negations and and when we apply that then that's how we uh, we come up with some results and basically what the software does is that not only does it look at positive and negative words but it also try to find generally negative words that doesn't seem to be affected by negation so, so so we work a lot on that but when we apply that we have always been telling to people that out of the box sentiment dictionary is usually in terms of accuracy it's not necessarily the best you could do and what we wanted to do is see whether we could improve that okay uh, and and we have been recommending since uh, since uh, many years now that you should customize uh, your your dictionary to a specific domain or or to a specific context and in our 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 um, experiment what I I did uh, ask is one of our employee if a new employee to to try to see whether she could improve um, uh, results of a sentiment dictionary by customizing it by trying to try to identify the words that should be removed for some reasons uh, uh, that are that are somehow either associated with things in the context but not associated with sentiment or maybe had some words also that would be be relevant okay uh, so we needed to take into account beauty products and online sales okay but so what we did is that uh, the first step was to remove product or content specific words words used to describe the product the service the company or were predicting the wrong results uh, um, so when we saw some words predicting wrong results we had either to reassign it to, to the proper category so moving from positive to negative or the reverse or maybe try to disambiguate them and um, disambiguation is something that uh, takes time to explain if uh, but uh, but the next uh, um, the next uh, webinar that will look more specifically at how to do that will uh, we'll talk and show how to do that okay so and once we remove words that are not uh, correct or or move them what we could do also is have domain specific uh, sentiment words that are not necessarily positive or negative in in uh, in general context but in the context of here beauty products sold online on amazon uh, would be would be uh, uh, would be uh, either positive or negative okay so just to give you an example of negative words that we remove from the dictionaries all those words were actually part of uh, a sentiment dictionary but actually if you really look at those and look at and and think of the fact that um, um, we are dealing about uh, beauty products those are some of the, the the problems that the beauty products try to solve by 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 
reducing wrinkles, um, hiding scars, etc. So, so we thought that we should probably remove those since they are they are likely part of the description of the product. This is what they are trying to to deal with. Uh, uh, also, we found that many words that were negative were actually related to to, um, to instruction. Okay, uh, uh, how to apply the product. But also, we found also uh, other words that were more associated with with um, with uh, promise or results. So, for example, your 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 um, your wrinkles will will, uh, will vanish or disappear and things like that. So, those are not necessarily um, negative words when we are analyzing um, uh, beauty products because they may be simply uh, trying to describe what the product should do. Okay, we also find uh, positive words to remove. Okay, uh, proof, for example, uh, uh, actually uh, we found a lot of waterproof, smog proof, etc. Um, we found uh, actually the word star is an interesting one because this was predicting negative sentiment. But of course, if you're the star of the show, it must be positive. But we, if you give only one star without an S, it's probably not not a good review, for, uh, but actually we remove it. We could have moved it to the negative, uh, but we thought it was a little bit like cheating. <laughs> uh, um, but indeed, if I was to analyze um, uh, Amazon reviews, I would probably put star in the negative. Uh, in this case, we wanted to do it without that. But we also found that some words like skeptic were actually predicting positive sentiment. I was skeptic, but. Okay, so we found some some interesting words to to, um, uh, to to remove, but we also had words that are not necessarily negative, or 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 that we were able to find more quickly because we did analyze um, uh, comments about the specific product. So we found that uh, all those words were actually negative words associated with with uh, with uh, negative reviews. Okay, and uh, also we found that context related, if you are ordering product online, when you mention the word re re return or called or, or even calls with an S, it is very predictive of negative sentiment. Okay, so this take into account the context is, is that they, they ask for, for reimbursement, send it back, that's a phrase, um, okay, notified, authorized, uh, typically authorized return, but also we found, this one was interesting, is that we also found that anything related to advertising was, was uh, often associated with negative sentiment, was predicting negative sentiment, advertising, publicity, picture, photo, quite likely because there was a gap between the product and what was, was advertised. If, if you get what is advertised, you may not mention advertising or ad or photo as often. We found that actually in, in, this, in this data set, okay? And we also had a lot of positive words as well, okay? So by doing that, we were able to, uh, to, uh, to get uh, a, a better coverage and it went to, and this is the last column, it went, uh, okay, so we were at 77.6% with version two, but after we did that, we had this person to customize it, and this person was able to customize it at 82.5%. She spent four days on that. She she was a um, a new employee, so she she had to familiarize herself with that. But uh, overall, she was able to increase that, and we sure that with more work and with uh, with more experience, she would have been able to to increase that further. Okay, so because 77% is yeah, it's it it's better than 50%, which would be by chance. Okay, so for example, this one is actually pretty close to chance, uh, but we were able to improve that to 77%. This is a typical accuracy that you should, you should get from uh, existing tools, 70, 75%. Uh, uh, but also, uh, the beauty products, if you customize it, then you could increase that, and now you could reuse that and come up with better prediction. Okay, and as for bias. Uh, we went from 11% to 7.6%, so also less biased um, tool. Now, 
what about machine learning? We saw that there were two, um, uh, two tools that use machine learning. The results were not very good, but they actually use um, uh, for training a data set that may not have been as at all related to beauty products. So what if we had a training set of, of reviews about um, uh, beauty products? What kind of, of results could we get? So, so typically what we did is that we uh, took a, um, uh, we took the data sets as a training set and we, uh, and we, um, we did a naive base uh, classifier. We actually spent very few times um, comparing to the four days it took to, um, to, to customize it. It took about something like 10 minutes to, te to test a couple of models and we decided to stop there. So what we did is that we included 4,553 words, the most frequent ones, and we use leave one out cross validation, and we had another data set of twenty thousand other PUD products from the same source, Amazon as well, and we tried to see whether um, uh, developing a, a machine learning uh, a, a, a machine learning model or an automatic document classification model on a data set so close to the actual data sets. Um, whether we could get better results. And what we found is that indeed in less than 10 minutes, we were able to get uh, a, a almost 94% accuracy. And I'm sure that if we had spent more time, we could have bring that to 86, maybe even 87 or 88%. Why? Because we have a, a training set that was quite high. And there are several ways to, to improve that and to optimize a model. We didn't test for for a lot of parameters. We simply, once we got 54%, 83.7%, we thought it was good enough, okay? To demonstrate at least, okay? So, and the interesting thing also is that the error was also very low at 0.6%. At so maybe the question you have is, okay, why not doing, <coughs> machine learning all the time. Uh, and it is almost always more accurate and precise as a, a lexicon approach, as long as you have a training set that is very close to what you are trying to predict, okay? It also have a better recall because uh, the recall is actually how many prediction was made and, and actually the software made a prediction for almost all, if not all items and never came to conclusion that it was neutral or mixed, okay? It's also very fast to develop. Uh, if it took us 10, 10, 10 minutes and we could have let the software optimize and f uh, test multiple models, uh, but we stopped, uh, we decided that at, uh, again at 94%, at that was good enough. It also required very low efforts and no domain expertise, which is quite interesting. There are reasons why not to use it. First, you need a, a training set. If you have a training set, it's good, but if, you, or, but if you don't have a training set, well, that's bad because, well, uh, you, you need to do one. You, you, you may ask people or, or, or maybe use um, uh, Amazon Turk to have uh, or crowdsourcing tools to, to build the data sets, uh, which requires some efforts and sometimes some money. Uh, but it's, uh, but of course, if you have it, then maybe you could use that to, uh, to, to, to develop a, a machine learning on, on uh, the type of data that you want to, to categorize. Uh, the problem is that it's, it's a bag of word classification. And so we put, I'm gonna need 4,500 words or, or more. Uh, and the thing is that there may be some words there that are not predicting, that are not, uh, uh, that do predict some, uh, some uh, positive or negative sentiment, but that should not be there if, if maybe there's a, a very good product. The product name itself could product could uh, could uh, could predict something either positive or negative. Okay, uh, <clears throat> uh, and it's very context uh, specific. So as we saw, a machine learning done on something else may not work on on this data set. We had two example of that in in the data that I show you from uh, Stanford NLP and the NLTK package. Okay, so if you don't have a training set close to what you're trying to predict, you may not get as good results. And it, for some people, they don't like that because it's, 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 uh, if it can be considered a kind of black box, you don't know why it is more accurate. It may be accurate, uh, if it may overfit as well, but, but, but it may be hard to explain why 
uh, you obtain such high frequency. And sometimes it's, it's important to know how uh, some scores has, has been assigned. And also sometimes it does not perform well. Uh, we saw that on, uh, for another model, but we have seen a situation where predicting sentiment or predicting some outcome may be more difficult. There are some data sets that may be more difficult. Twitter may be one example where uh, <clears throat> the content is still short and um, sometimes, uh, and, and of course sarcasm um, that is often mentioned can, can, um, can decrease performance of machine learning, okay? Um, before, well, um, the next, um, in the next webinar, what we will try to, to show you is how to apply a dictionary, but, but applying dictionary in words that is quite easy, but how to customize it and how to identify those words that you should remove, how to identify the words that you should add it uh, to, your, to, to your sentiment dictionary, how to test it, uh, and see whether the accuracy does increase. Uh, so that will be something that we wanted to, to, to do uh, uh, solely even worse that we will try to, uh, to show you different steps that you could do to do sentiment analysis and, and increase sentiment analysis uh, accuracy and reduce bias using worse stat. Uh, I, I often say that there are ways to avoid sentiment analysis and, and um, a, a, a lot of time people come to us and they want to do sentiment analysis and they already have a satisfaction score and I tell them or a, uh, uh, here it's more like, like a NPS score from zero to, to 10, um, but sometimes also if it's a, a rating scale and typically uh, they also have an open-end question and they ask us to do a uh, sentiment analysis on the open-ended question. What we tell them is that the score by itself should probably be used uh, as, as a good, uh, good uh, indication of sentiment, okay? If they score 10, they are probably very satisfied. If they score zero, well, something is, uh, is, is going on, they are not satisfied. And what you could then do is try to see what is associated, uh, what in the text here is associated with this without trying to, to, uh, to guess the sentiment from the text itself. The other things that I find useful is that when you have two open-ended questions, one for positive and one for negative features, for example, if you go to, uh, to, um, to Glassdoor, uh, you will have positive comments. Okay, what are the positive aspects of this company? What is the negative aspects of this company? The pros and cons. And by doing that, simply describing what appears in those two different fields may be quite good enough to uh, to uh, 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 to identify things that should be changed or or things that. Um, increase satisfaction. Of course, you will still have people who will will uh, formulate uh, their answers so that they will include both positive and negative sides, trying to compare things. But uh, overall, you will likely get something that will be quite good in terms of predicting what uh, is causing problem or dissatisfaction and, and what is causing satisfaction. So this is one of the recommendations I would do. First, Try to see whether you could, uh, you, you have what you needed to get some uh, ideas of what is the sentiment. And a rating scales or NPS score is a good one, uh, much more reliable, like probably, than trying to do that on text. We saw that, well, if you are at 75%, well, this may be more indicative of sentiment than what you could get with a, a tool and do that on 75%. But also, I've, I've always find that uh, that the sentiment analysis was quite simplistic in, in its approach. It's difficult, but simplistic. So in, in one case, we were asked um, for a project um, to, uh, to do something on course evaluation, and they asked us to do sentiment analysis. We, we, we told them that, no, use the score, you have a rating scale, but we will try to come up with something much more precise. And, and this is something that that um, is worthwhile because rather than thing, saying only that it's positive or negative, we were actually able to tell them that it is clear, it is easy, comprehensive, relevant, engaging. This is about course evaluation, remember? Interesting, enjoyable, fair, helpful, supportive, available. 
but we also had negative dimension as well. So we were able to come up with not only a, a binary or um, decision as whether it's positive or negative, anyway they had the, the rating scales, but we were able to tell them why they were um, they, they, they score positively or negatively. Is it because they, they think it was fair, unfair, uh, easy, uh, difficult, clear, unclear? So, uh, so we were able to give something that was more, uh, we thought was more, uh, more detail. Uh, also, it did take more time to develop than the, than the sentiment dictionary. Uh, we work on, on this case on 1.8 million uh, course evaluation from students who graded their courses or their professor uh, but but the thing is that the uh, richness of information is much greater so this is something also that that is worth exploring if you want to do sentiment uh, there are some tools that try to differentiate whether the person is angry versus whether the person is uh, is sad or dissatisfied or or uh, or or um, either anxious or or uh, afraid so so there are ways to to measure more specific uh, emotion but uh, in the case of course evaluation we were able actually to identify dimension that were relevant okay so I think that you should remember that rather than simply doing a, a binary decision positive or negative and if I use a dictionary for that maybe you could do something like like this now uh, there's a, a few tools in words that, that allow you to disambiguate things and there are some tools that will apply lexicon. The problem is many of those tools will match either match any item or match just one. Uh, words that and we will see that uh, next uh, at the next webinar actually allow you to to use priority rules to disambiguate some words so you may have a word that is in a positive um, uh, list of words but actually, uh, when associate when part of a phrase or when associated with some other words become negative or or should be removed because they they, they become irrelevant, and and it's possible to do that by having um, priority rules. And in our case, in words that longer phrase will always have precedence over shorter phrases, phrase over words. So so you could have, for example, noble is typically in the positive dictionary but if if you find that there's a lot of people talking about Barnes and Noble uh, the store then you could put Barnes and Noble and it will have precedence over the word and the word itself will not be categorized noble when it is part of the phrase and we also had the ability to have case sensitive over case insensitive uh, words over word patterns so so that kind of thing allow us to develop dictionaries that are more precise that's the reason why double negation allow us to to don't consider them as a negation, okay? But also we had some exception this way. I was skeptic, became, or was skeptic, became a word associated with positive sentiment, okay? Uh, or we could add that to the ex uh, exclusion list if we want to keep skeptic in the negative words. Um, so, um, well, um, I don't want to spend too much time on that, um, we will get back on that. So, 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 what I would like to to um, to uh, to do now is see whether there's any question about the sentiment analysis. I know I haven't shown a lot word stat, but we thought that the, uh, you have to understand the general context of what is the challenge when you try to do sentiment analysis, accuracy, and and uh, bias, and um, um, uh, but then we will look more closely at how to apply a dictionary, how it works, helps you develop dictionaries, maybe find some synonyms, maybe find some words in your text that you should have, etc. No, I can't hear no. No more? Yes. Okay, you're there? Yes. Okay, I just had to change my mic into a different jack. So okay. now we're going to take questions. Um, that, oh, just to answer one question that's there, um, this uh, that's there already. Uh, this webinar will be posted to our website, um, and uh, under the support uh, um, 
section on the website. It'll be posted later on today, so you can re-listen to it and you'll be able to see the PowerPoint that's there and the entire webinar with the commentary that goes with it. Um, if you would like to ask a question, use the chat feature on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen and um, we will take as many questions as time allows. We've got about 15 minutes and if there are other questions, we may try to answer them <laughs> offline. So the first question, Norma, is can you develop a lexicon from a successful machine learning exercise? Uh, interesting, yeah, as long, um, uh, uh, as, long as you can access um, the, um, uh, the, the results, the final results of the, um, of the, um, uh, 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 of, of, of the, um, the machine learning, which is not always the case, uh, then yes, you could look at those words, select those words carefully and, and, and have them to a lexicon. And, and it is actually, and let me actually show you quickly that you don't actually have to do a machine learning. You could simply look at, let me remove that. And I do have, I do believe that I have, let me check, I have the rating, so one or five, and simply by, by doing a correlation of words, uh, and here I did not remove the, the, the stop word list, but uh, by simply moving, uh, looking at words associated with uh, either positive or negative uh, items, you should be able to identify the words that will be good predictor, okay? Um, of course, um, if you do a neural network or deep learning, you won't be able to see that because it's pretty difficult to see how, how to extract from that. Uh, if, or, or if you know that, let me know. But, but it's quite difficult to find um, items that are related. And, and actually, for example, here I could do a correlation. I do prefer gamma. Or 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 summer D this one okay those two will be uh, will give uh, good prediction here I did extract 4,553 words and I I can compute a gamma and then sort on a gamma that will show me for negative items things that are related to lower score and for positive things things that are associated with with uh, with uh, um, positive uh, or sentiment and and let me actually show it to you okay sucks, <laughs> misleading, scam, unusable, and if I sort the other way, okay, somehow, puppy, <laughs> okay, and, but, but those may be, and, and here is where you could select, because I can see that those are likely um, uh, either specific products, and also the frequency if it's quite low, uh, typically I tend not to include those, but uh, using a simple technique like that will, will give you some insights about what could be uh, associated with positive or negative um, sentiment. Okay, another question is, is the dictionary available, to, is the WordStat dictionary available to users? Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, uh, when you install WordStat, I, if it actually came with uh, WordStat sentiment, this one, um, and it is fully editable, uh, so, for example, if you apply that, and, and I will show how to customize that, how to assess some words. So we have negative words, positive words. Uh, we still have some words to assess, but uh, uh, okay, okay, negation words, including some misspellings of the negations, uh, double negation, okay? And the rules are, are, are there. So we have one in English. We also have one in French. Uh, 1.2 is no longer... A, available now we are at at three but for 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 uh, in French uh, we have this one and we will actually release pretty soon a Spanish one as well so all of those are are available um, uh, uh, for WordStat users when you you um, you uh, install the software if it, it 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 installed automatically the, the the French one the English one and, and we will have the Spanish one. Those ones, uh, we won't make them available because you can, well, uh, we would not be allowed to do so without asking first uh, authorization to make them available, uh, but it's easy to compute them, okay, from, from the original sources. Uh, if it's easy to take those, uh, create a word set dictionary of it, okay? <coughs> okay. 
The next question is, can you only predict positive or negative sentiment? For example, if we were training on police reports and trying to detect bias against victims or doubts about credibility. <coughs> okay, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, quite an interesting question is that no, uh, actually Wordstat was, initially we did, re uh, we did release Wordstat in uh, 1998, but we waited many years before releasing a word, a sentiment dictionary because we, we thought it was too simplistic. And, um, and indeed, a lot of people will build their own dictionary and uh, one of them is quite interesting. Let me um, get it. Uh, I will have to search uh, quickly uh, because it actually been used to somehow measure credibility in some case. So I think it is worth uh, mentioning. I hope it is uh, because I, I did a lot of tests on, on backups. So let me see. It may be this one. Uh, dictionary. Uh, the Iller. Okay. <laughs> and also, uh, in terms of, of uh, bias against victim, um, so 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 this is um, this is a dictionary that was created initially to to look at when people um, how someone express oneself, and it looks at not what people say but how they say it, and it tried to identify someone who is ambiguous. Okay, so if if uh, if if a witness is ambiguous, or if someone tried to hide something, uh, this person may be more ambiguous than someone who is actually telling the truth. Um, although that would need to be verified empirically. But for example, if you use a lot of those words, bluff and recovery, uh, approximation, uh, admission of of error, then actually you may be talking about something you don't know or something that you have a very vague collection of it. So in terms of credibility or, or in terms of, of, um, of, um, <coughs> of, um, of uh, maybe uh, um, simply vagueness of testimony, th that was used somehow for that. But there's uh, uh, also, you could also have reference, you could add other dimension maybe to this dictionary that would me measure any um, terms that uh, seems to uh, imply uh, that uh, this person is racially biased or gender biased, uh, etc. Often by uh, analyzing documents this person wrote, say for example on, on, on his Facebook account or elsewhere, uh, you may be able to, to identify that this person does indeed have some bias. Okay, so that would be one way to do it. Uh, of course, uh, building a, a dictionary from scratch is takes some time. Quite often, it is useful also to uh, to uh, to uh, <clears throat> uh, to look at what other people have done. I, I just found a, um, a a a dictionary that was looking at uh, politeness. Okay. Uh, so, so it, it is interesting, and if I had to create something like that, uh, either politeness or Im impoliteness, I would likely try to look at those and try to see whether we could uh, we could uh, build something that would be either as good or sometimes maybe improve on on existing ones to try to measure other dimension. Wordstat was created. Well, most of the people actually who use Wordstat don't do sentiment analysis. They develop their own dictionary or they use existing ones. And worst set comes with maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 different dictionaries that measure different dimension. Okay, so that's a. <coughs> okay, uh, probably two more questions, but um, are the French and English dictionaries equally <laughs> accurate? Uh, no, uh, actually uh, version three uh, that, that we release after version two that I mentioned is, um, uh, we decided to make it more accurate, but for uh, B2C type of, of uh, domain. So by doing that, we were able to have some dimension and we were able to, to uh, on, on this data set, we tried on, on this data sets, it actually go to 83%, uh, close to what we got by, by customizing it. Uh, because some of the words also that we found in beauty product could be added to positive and negative dictionary. While the French one, um, well, we did spend some efforts as well as as the Spanish one. The French one, we I, I think we are above 75%. Uh, 
but um, uh, again, it will depend a lot on some data sets. And I remember specifically that if, if even the English one, I can tell you that, okay, 83% is good, but we try to apply that on, uh, on, on uh, HR data, so, uh, so human resources, people, um, employees evaluation, and we found that it was not very good. It was below 70%. Okay, so it will anyway depend on the context, but the French one we were able to get, I think we were able to get on many data sets uh, close to 80%, uh, between 75 and 80%. On some other data sets, maybe 75, uh, 70. <clears throat> and the uh, Spanish one, we do the, the same kind of efforts, trying to see whether, uh, um, and it should be, when it will be released, it should be close to 75, at least 75%. Hopefully uh, higher, but again for specific data sets. Okay, this is going to be our last question. Um, what about the in between, um, so the neutral? Can you predict that? Okay, um, uh, indeed. Uh, uh, for example, uh, the way we compute in this data set the um, uh, the, uh, the score, and because we took only uh, score one and two, one and two stars, and five stars. We didn't care about uh, the middle score, but actually we may be able to come up uh, either by doing that and later integrating. Well, I would suggest starting with the extreme, but then integrating uh, uh, the, the in between in order to identify whether maybe the, there is a possibility to identify uh, um, um, rather than having simply zero and one, maybe come up with some some um, some scores from minus three to plus three, for example, that would come up and get a better prediction of those uh, in between score. But what I have to tell you is that when people say neutral, it basically quite often represent the limit of the lexicon, is that they haven't found any sentiment words, but based on the words they were looking for. Uh, it, it doesn't mean necessarily that it is neutral. It simply means that they haven't found anything there. And for mix, of course, we have to discuss how we define mix. Is mix uh, is about equal number of positive and negative, or simply because there are, uh, see, if, if there's 50 positive words and two negative words, should we, uh, should we consider that as mix or should we consider that as positive? Well, because of there's overwhelming uh, the higher number of positive words, we may decide that. So, so there's a gray area here. Here we don't know how, how, how to decide it, how, how things will be categorized as mixed. Okay, so um, so and I haven't seen a lot of, of discussion how this is done. I know that this company that was discarding any items that had more than two negative words in an overwhelmingly positive um, uh, comment, uh, categorized that as mix, was somehow a way of not making a prediction. While I think that uh, at some point we may be more more uh, adventurous and decided that when there's a over when, when there's a higher number to a specific proportion when at least a specific proportion we may probably make a uh, sentiment prediction it's yeah okay it's mixed but it's more positive than negative okay okay um thank you very much uh thank you for attending the webinar uh, as I said before, we'll be posting a recording of the webinar on the website probably later on this afternoon by the latest tomorrow morning. Um, we will also be doing a follow-up on uh, using uh, WordStat for sentiment analysis. We haven't picked a date yet. It may be in early December or it may be in mid-January. Take a look at our newsletters and our social media and our website for an announcement about that. We'll probably be making a decision on that again in the next week or so. Um, and of course, if there's a subject that you would like us to cover in future webinars, please send it to us through the Contact Us link on our website and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Um, thank you very much and have a great day.